getting started again. Thank you for your patience and thank you for uh, sticking around. Got a dozen people stick around. That's nice. I've got a new glass of water. And I've got what? So here you can see uh, my screen. And um, here you can see my Wacom monitor that I'm working on. And, uh, you know, I take the pen, I draw on the Wacom monitor. So you can see uh, where I am with that. And I have scanned this drawing into Photoshop. Photoshop was being, um, was giving me trouble. Didn't want to. Didn't want to open. But sometimes Photoshop, at least the version of Photoshop that I've got, can cause trouble. But I'm back. Still doing these um, housekeeping things that shouldn't be taking this time. Just a second. Just things. Well, I've got to deal with my shadow now, don't I? Jeez. You step away for a few minutes, and then everything goes to hell. So this is all that stuff I should have gotten done in that 15 minutes had... Uh, Photoshop not refused to open and give me all that trouble. Now I'm all washed out. There, I think I'm back. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. I'm kind of normal now. All right, I think I've got it working. Here is the so here's the uh, the um, the Wacom tablet that I draw on. It's taken the place of my drawing board where I was drawing the mosquito. And here's the better view of the Wacom tablet. Here is the mosquito. Let's make him. So that ended up being about 25 minutes of scanning this and redoing everything when it starts up because it doesn't remember where it left off. With 17. Okay. So I scanned it in two pieces because I have a cheap little scanner and I draw on 14 by 17 paper. Image grayscale, background, unlocked. Let's go to the right. All copy, back to the left. Paste it in. Looks right. Now let's... deal with this uh, all the stuff that might be a little bit off and that's probably looking good so let's flatten 
Now it is one piece of art. Needs to rotate a bit. This is just uh, clean up. Point three counterclockwise. That looks a little bit better. Now everyone's gone quiet. Now that I'm back to drawing. But I appreciate your staying with me, folks, so thank you. Okay. I use an old version of Photoshop, CS4, so I think these complaints I have about it being um, finicky may be things that they fixed in later versions. So I wouldn't take the criticism to, uh, to heart, really. Nobody should be using as old a version of Photoshop as I use, but, you know, it works. I'm a bit afraid of jumping into the cloud. Thanks for sticking with me, Lily Bean. I'm getting notices from Twitch about how they have a new feature where if you watch uh, archive video, the chat will play along with the, the video. Kind of nice. Except that, uh, you know, Twitch deletes the videos when they get just like two or three weeks old. And that's terrible. Alright, let's take everything and give it some more contrast because I want this to look like line art. Brighter, darker. I'll probably find where it was. Let's give another shot of contrast. Okay. Image size. My standard for when I start doing these things is that I make a thousand DPI line art version, eight inches wide, and this will be seven. 5.75 high, which is a good editorial cartoon proportion. Okay. Now let's save this. I could have taken an hour off for housekeeping and come back at this point, huh? Zika mosquito. One new follower today, oh dear. But uh, thank you, John Waters Jr. for your extra follow. Right, so let's make this bitmap. Okay, flatten the area, 50% uh, threshold. Okay, looks good. Now I'm gonna blow it up, clean up the hickeys. This will be a uh, pretty easy one for cleaning up the hickeys because lots of blank area to clean up. And not a lot of uh, drawing details that I think I need to go back into and futz around with again. Leave that. Just doing house cleaning. Do I like the bottom part of this guy's eye? I don't know, do I? How about if I get rid of that? Is that better? No.
Oh, you folks, you've gone quiet again. Hmm. <laughs> if you want me to talk, you guys should say something. There's, there's uh, 17 people here. I guess one of them is me. I think I only really get the new visitors when I'm on the Jumbotron, and I guess I'm not on the Jumbotron today. Not quite her sure how that Jumbotron feature happens, but it's nice when it happens. Aristocat11, nice to see you here. And Kidscoop News, yeah. 3D printer version of this mosquito would be great fun. So Weefa writes, how many times has somebody said to you, so your cartoonists say I've always wanted to do a children's book? Well, I tell you, one of the common emails I get is from somebody who has written a children's book and wants somebody to illustrate it but doesn't have any budget and wants you to do it on spec for a portion of the book. And uh, it's true that most cartoonists get... Oh, I got a follower, Aristocat. Thank you so much. That's very nice of you. Now I'm back up to a... Well, it still says 198, doesn't it? Maybe it's not counting. You should have made the count go up by one, but I gave you a nice thank you. Thank you, Aristocat. Looks like I chopped his finger off. Thank you again, Aristocat. That was very nice of you. Well, I guess that's good enough. I'm just going to keep uh, doing my house cleaning until I get to the other side of the drawing. Some of it is seeing things that I could have drawn a little more artfully. These spots on the mosquito are not things that I typically think of in the mosquito that just pops out of my head. 
but apparently these particular mosquitoes that carry the Zika virus have these big spots. interesting that fixing this handle is one of those things that use the part of my brain that wants to be used for talking every so often i have to fight my brain like i have to fight photoshop photoshop would not open without a restart And unfortunately, my Mac takes a long time to restart. So cleaning up the hickeys here. You know, as my drawings go, this is actually a pretty much of a quickie. And uh, big mosquito is a fun thing to draw. Lily Bean writes, are you a full-time cartoonist? Actually, I run this cartooning syndicate and I tend to spend about half my time doing business stuff. And I guess that would make me not being a cartoonist half the time, dealing with cartoon business. But if you call cartoon business cartooning, then yeah, I'm a full-time cartoonist. If each of the presidential candidates were bugs, what kind of bugs would they be? Right, Stawifa. Well, I don't know. I think they might all be stink bugs. All of them stink bugs. One cartoon idea that I had that I decided not to do was uh, Stinky Ted Cruz and Donald Trump making this big waftaroon, you know, cartoon waftaroon. It's a smoke that goes up in the air, goes underneath your nose, and you smell it and go, Ugh. So the wafterune would be going under the nose of the uh, <coughs> the uh, Republican establishment elephant who, rec 
coils at the smell. I hadn't thought of doing them as stink bugs, so just stinky. And I rejected the idea because who cares? Not much of an idea. Fun to draw though. Sometimes I do things just because they're fun to draw. Kind of like this cartoon. Not a real strong cartoon, but and likely a Yahtzee that I haven't noticed because I haven't been watching closely enough. Here's the the real mosquito. Can't even see the eyes on the mosquito. Lily Bean writes, Bush would have made a good praying mantis. I drew Bush as a dog a lot. I don't think I ever made him an insect. Okay, is that looking all right? You know, now the next question is, do I want to do any black and white on this at all for a black and white version, or should I just send them the line art. Is the line art strong enough without any tone? Hmm, might be. I haven't written Zika on it. That's the next question. Do I want to write Zika on him? If I do, I think I need tone for that. Tell you what, I'll do the color first and then I'll come back and decide if I want to do black and white at all. I'm not sure. And he fucks around with my settings for a second. Photoshop does not want to give way to Chrome. Okay, there's Chrome. Boom, boom, boom. Fix this, fix that. Give me just a second here, dealing with the junk. Too much junk to deal with. All right, I've got to deal with this and not deal with too much other housekeeping. So my apologies. There's too many things to fix after you uh, reboot. Like that. Turn off the sound. I think I was getting a Twitch commercial. Boy, all these housekeeping things very demanding. Yep, it's not gonna work. All right, I'm back to the the mosquito. So, to make him into color. I have a procedure, so we'll save as, this is going to be 400 dpi, CMYK, okay. Scale CMYK. 
Now let's unlock. Let's select all. Select the color range so I get just the black. Oops. Yeah, that's right. Select the color range. Get just the black. black to be 100k <coughs> excuse me kids group wrote news writes the folks from raid should hire you to take over their commercials yeah they should all right to delete the black and fill with my 100k black and clearly it did not entirely fill. Sometimes Photoshop resists and you just have to keep insisting. Now that looks more black. Fill again. More black. So let's see if we've got 100k. We do! Alright, that's good. Now, let's add <coughs> some more layers. I usually add as many layers as there is space in the window. And sort of reposition things because it's all uh all hamajang from the Reboot. Okay. So I think put that up at the top. And let's delete the white. Oops, that was still the black. I'll select the inverse. And delete the white. And on the bottom layer. to make sure that the white is zero 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 which it is all fill there's the white back and I want to check the black again just to make sure that it really is black because of the way that Photoshop resists and changed it to 95 didn't it why the hell does it do that I have to check like uh, a dozen times to make sure that Photoshop didn't change the black. Color range selected. This will be 100, so let's fill. Once. Twice. Because of the resistance of Photoshop, I make it do things it really doesn't want to do. All right, let's check that. Want it to be 100K? Is it? Yes. For now, it is. Okay. Now I want to make the image 400 DPI. Image size 400 DPI. Okay. Now that I'm sure it was 100K. Double check it. Okay. I think that's right. And so some of these lightest lines should have gone to gray. This softens up the edges, but it still maintains that 1000 dpi look even when it's only 400 dpi. Alright, now I'm ready to color. So, what color is this puppy going to be? Let's go with yellow because then I can make him kind of purple and uh, 
I think purplish, blackish, bloody is good for a mosquito. So. About 10, 75, 0. Is that for a good yellow? Yeah, good enough. Kind of a nasty yellow. Okay. Make the opacity light. Call it 25. Okay, now let's um, soften it up with some pattern. Again, Aristocat11, thank you for uh, your follow. I do appreciate it. We have two new follows today, which is nice. All right. Capacity, let's make it 66. I like to soften up the edges of light background colors with a texture because sometimes when you see bad printing, you'll see these light areas like the yellows come out a little bit gray and have hard edges. And I don't like that. So giving them uh, edges like this. Gives me a little control over that. Let's give them a little bit of orange, very light orange. Back to the white. It's looking like it needed a little bit of softening. Okay. That's probably all I need for background, huh? Let's give him some ground color. Another layer. Opacity. 30. Okay, that looks like the ground. Next. Oh, and DeWifa is following me on Twitter as well. Yes, on Twitter I'm D-C-A-G-L-E, D Cagle. -E and I should be better about my Twittering. All right, this is what the mosquito looks like. Not a lot of color detail going on, you know? There's a little bit of lightness to some of his parts, but that's a beige. That's not very interesting. I'm going to take some artistic liberty with the color. Let's, uh, let's just start layering them in. Decide on a suitcase color, like a good suitcase color.
give that a hundred percent so it's a little easier to uh, lay in as a base color old-fashioned suitcase Oh, I always need to remember to make the top layer multiply. What multiply does is it makes all the colors print through it. So the colors will be underneath the black lines. Yeah, good enough looking suitcase. All right, we can add some. Uh, texture to the suitcase. Let's do that first. Can use a little bit of lightning in its spot. Excuse me. All right, let's do a base color for the mosquito. What should his base color be? Hmm. That's kind of an interesting color. Let's see what that is. Too blue. Yeah, maybe that's good. Very, uh, very purple. That grays it up. All right, let's go with this. Maybe that's too dark. That's probably better. I usually am pretty sloppy about labeling my layers. All right, why is that not working? That's not working. That. Yeah, I think that's a good mosquito color. I can come back in on the top of it with some details. Look at how much more, uh, how much more intense and blue it is when it's next to the little bit of a yellow background. All it takes.
So nobody has anything to say while I'm doing this, uh, what's likely a long process of laying in the base color for the mosquito. What if the mosquito was a little green in the face to show he's sick? Just the thought. You know, I'm going to throw more colors in here. And, uh, yes, a little bit of green with the uh, purple, I think, is a good idea. I'll do that with my uh, sponge tool. We'll see how it looks. But, um... I see how the proboscis is subliminally Republican rights. No red ties. <laughs> well, that would be subliminal. So once I get him all laid in with a flat purple, I'll come back and add uh, shade and highlight, and then maybe a touch of some uh, different colors here and there, like maybe that little bit of green that uh, Dawifa suggested, which seems kind of nasty with the purple. When I finish up this color, I'll take a look at it in grayscale and decide if I want to do grayscale at all. I may not. So if I put the Zika label on the color version and not on the black line art version, some newspapers are going to print the color version in black and white just to get the Zika label. And I may see, I've, uh, there have been times when I've done a black and white line version because I liked my line art. I thought it held up fine. If I didn't do anything special in gray. And the newspapers all print the color version in gray. Anyway. Because they like tone better which can be frustrating. So thank you folks all for being here and uh, those of you who follow, thank you so much for following. need to come back with a thinner brush to do some of these hairs. Okay. Let's thicken the brush up. Fill the interiors. Mm. 
no red ties, right? Similar purple color as well to those Republicans you draw that aren't donkeys. You know, I do make Republicans purple. The color that you would make a an elephant should be gray, but gray is dull. Gray is like nothing going on, but purple, when it's printed in a newspaper in CMYK, tends to dull down a bit. It's not a color that maintains its its opacity when it's um, printed in CMYK. Dulls it down. It grays it up anyway. And so I like having some uh, some color go on in my elephants, so I make them purple. A little bit lighter purple than this. And generally, I'd say people don't notice or comment on that. I can't recall anyone ever even noticing or commenting before no red ties. Okay. Let's that smaller and let's do some hairs. Kid Scoop News writes, are there any political topics you get tired of drawing cartoons about? Well, there are often topics in the news that I'm not particularly interested in. Sometimes, now being in the position that I'm in, having the syndicate, I have a lot more freedom than newspaper cartoonists who have a, a hole to fill in a newspaper every day. Because if I know that everybody's going to be drawing something, I don't really have an obligation to draw that. Whereas when I worked for a newspaper, if there's a big story that day, I remember one that I didn't want to draw was the obit cartoon for Bob Hope. He died when I was working for the newspaper. But I had to, because uh, it was the news that day. Bob Hope died. But I'd say cartoonists hate drawing, well, I hate drawing obituary cartoons, crime cartoons, weather cartoons. Um... You know, I hate it when there's a big tragedy and everybody wants a tear in the eye cartoon. And you gotta do it, because that's what everybody wants. But, you know, the cartoonists have their own culture about these things. And so where the editors and the readers get a tear in the eye cartoon, and they say, oh, it's so wonderful tear in the eye, it's just how I feel. The cartoonists look at that and say, ha ah, ah, ha ah, ah, ha, Daryl's such a hack, you drew a tear in the eye cartoon. Or perhaps now they're saying, Daryl's such a hack, he's drawing the hitchhiking mosquito with the suitcase, ha 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 ha. So, cartoonists do not view their cartoons in the same way that uh, editors and readers view them. The most popular cartoons are the uh, celebrity obituary cartoons. Most popular cartoon in terms of laudatory email that I ever drew was when NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt died. He drew a, drove a black car with a number three on it, and I'm not a NASCAR fan. But I was working for the newspaper, and I had to draw it. And um, 
So I drew a kid in a ride-on that looked like a, the number three uh, Dale Earnhardt car. And he had a tear in his eye, just a tear in the eye cartoon. But it had a kid and a toy and a number three car. And those uh, NASCAR people just loved it. I got so much love mail. Dear Mr. Cagle, you know just how I felt about the death of our wonderful Dale Earnhardt. Okay, let's go a little bit darker. Good to go a little bit grayer when you go darker. Capacity, 50. That could be darker. And then bigger and softer. And on another layer. Running out of water, that's a tragedy. May need another break. I'm doing this for an hour. Since the last break. That was when I needed to restart the computer. bit of tone helps. This is just the lightest first little tone. I'll come in and put something much darker and then I'll add some other little color highlights and do some light parts. So let's make it much darker. Do that on another layer as well. This is just for the places that should be in the most shadow. Just the very dark parts. So, although I don't like to draw about crime and about the weather, here I don't mind drawing a uh, cartoon about a health issue. Maybe if crimes were committed by uh, big ugly mosquitoes, I'd want to draw them more. I've drawn terrorists as uh, bugs.
typically don't draw a lot of bugs. Okay, now the next question is that if you notice, he's got quite a red belly because he's gorged with blood. Do I want to make his belly redder? Hmm. I can try it and see what I think. Let's take uh, his regular color. See what happens when I add red to it. That would be a red belly tint. See if that makes sense. Not sure if I like that or not. What if I give him some more red texture? Ooh. It's looking a little nasty, bloody. Not sure if I like that or not, but I'm kind of leaning to it. Because it's nasty. Let's give him some white texture on another layer for the lights. That, yeah, 12% is okay. This will give him more of a textured look. I may have to call a break to go get a body break, potty break, and some more water. I ran out of my Flint, Michigan water. Yeah, the texture is helping. I like that it's not clean white. It's got this nastiness going on. I've got two white textures, the heavy white and the lighter white sponge. Drawing with the heavier one the lighter one for a minute make it a little bit more opaque Probably all I'm going to do with his white spots, make him just that white. Try with the 
heavier white. A little more going on here. Right, starting to look a little nastier. We talked about putting green into him. Well, I know he's going to need white eyeballs, so let's go with that for a minute. You folks are so quiet. I think the blood red eyes are uh, are a window into his soul, an ugly soul. This is actually going to print pretty dark in the newspaper. Now the next question, add another layer. And we'll call that uh, Zika layer. And then I will decide if I want to write Zika on here. Do I? Put that on top of the black. Make it a little thicker. All right, did it need a Zika label? People tell me. Give me your opinion on this. Is it better that it says Zika? I don't know that it is. I'll take it out. I'm leaning towards taking it out. But if I need it to explain the cartoon, to have the word Zika on his back, I can stick with it. No red ties suggest I take the, v the Zika label off of his back. In general, I think editorial cartoonists who use lots of labels are sissies. You should be willing to do your cartoon without a label on it. And no label, label, no label, label. I'm leaning toward no red ties here. So do we find Lily Bean both think well, no. Lily Bean. Lily Bean, you seem to be arguing in favor of the label. Well, let's try some uh, labels down here. Brighten these up, because these will be uh, focal points, all the countries he's been to.
No red ties, right? Let's try it red. Quite a bold thing to say try it red when your whole name is no red. Problem with red is that there's no uh, change in value. So if you print the cartoon, the color cartoon in black and white, it's just going to look like there's a bit of an error, and maybe there's something written there, but you can't be sure. So uh, you have to think in terms of value at the same time that you think of color. Oh, Brazil has to be green, doesn't it? Brazil is green and yellow. I don't know what the colors for Ecuador would be. Just made Ecuador. So if I was going to make it a color, I'd need to keep the, the value difference. I could make it uh, bright yellow. No red ties thinks I should leave the label off. I'm leaning that way myself. Venezuela is a bomb. Tawifa writes, would this likely be printed near a headline that has Zika on it? Very often, editorial page editors will save editorial cartoons to run like their illustrations, along with uh, an article on a topic. And, uh, you know, there's lots of articles about Zika virus now. It's a terrible thing. So, yes, it could be, but you don't want to limit it to that. It's still, in most cases, the editorial cartoons run uh, by themselves. Oh, it's kind of a bold pink.
Sometimes I'll get comments from editors which are, uh, oop, there goes my phone. I don't spend a lot of time with prep and I forget things like turn the sound off on your phone. Sorry about that. funny to have all these other labels of country names but to uh, then not have the word Zika appear in the cartoon. Okay, Kids Group News writes on YouTube that he votes for no label. Or are we caucusing? Yeah, I'm asking for your opinion. Okay, well, for now, let's turn. Seek a label off. That does make the suitcase into a big um, focal point with all the color on it, doesn't it? My old teacher's rule about um, the postage stamp being your focal point. That old design teacher at Art Center was something of a legend. He was kind of a kind of a colorful character. Name was Mr. Moore. He would. Uh, I remember at one point in class, he didn't like everybody's uh, work on a per certain assignment, so he said, "Let's have a little bonfire." He took everybody's art out in the backyard and burned it the art center backyard it was when they were in Pasadena hello bat moose nice to see you here I think you come in when I'm just about done what more does this need
we've decided not to put the Zika label right. Zika, no Zika. Zika, no Zika. All of you agree it's better with no Zika? Okay, let's, you know, tiniest little bit of detail in the eyeballs is always very nice. Let's dark that down, give him a little bit of shade in the colors of his eyes. There. So, Bat Moose, you need to follow me. I need more followers. I do appreciate the follows, folks. Okay. Now, the next question is, am I done? Maybe I'm done. Oh, thank you, Bat Moose. That's very nice of you. I appreciate it. We started the day with 198 following. I got three new followers, but I guess I lost two. So I still have 199. Thank you very much, Bat Moose. That's very nice of you. Okay. The hitchhiking guy. I've Final question, Zika, label or not? I'm thinking no. Thinking. No problem, thank you, Batmoose. Um, no Zika writes no red lines. Anybody else wanna vote on this? Zika or no Zika? Need a quick response. Just about to pop this one into the, the newspaper delivery. Okay. This is going out without Zika. If you know anything about Zika, you'll see the South American labels on the suitcase and know it's about Zika. So let's save. Thank you, Bat Moose. Yeah, no Zika. It's going out. There's no Zika. So we'll save this one. Then I'm going to have to decide what to do for a black and white version. Oops. Here. And this will be cartoon number 1097. Tiff. Okay. And then I'm going to try saving it as a JPEG because I think that might, file might be too big. So let's save as a JPEG. Yeah, that was 3.6 megs. That's going to work. I can make that. Oh no, 25.2 megs. <laughs> All right. We'll save as a JPEG. At nine quality, Let's see what we come up with. All 
I've got a file size limit of three and a half megs. And so I need to reduce the quality to get one version that's going to be no bigger than 3.6 megs can squeak through. The 9 came out at 3.3 megs. That's okay. Alright, we'll go with that. Now let's take a look at this. Let's save as. Seek a grayscale. Make it gray, see what we think. Uh, don't merge, okay. Well, do we like him better gray or just as line art? Let me think. I'm gonna have to take a five minute break while I figure this out and go potty and get some new water. So, uh, there I am with my Wacom tablet. And uh, so uh, give me five minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, I've returned. I think I'll play with this a little bit to decide if I want to uh, go with um, go with the grayscale or just the line art. Let's open up the line art again just to make sure. Oop, there's see, there's my Wacom uh, tablet. Looking down at my drawing table on the uh, keyboard. So just as a reminder, yeah, Batmoose, 
it's nice with color, but you know, most newspapers still print in black and white. And if I give them a black and white, I, I usually put up a black and white and a color version of each cartoon. This is the line art of this guy. Now the question is, do I give them the just the line artist, the black and white version, or do I? Uh, the Wefa writes, "Can you lighten the gray because the line art is strong?" I can. All right, let's uh, let's merge these. Now I can take the gray and lighten it up and see what we think. It's brighter. More contrast. Sure. Can deal with more contrast than color can because there's less interesting things going on in uh, less interesting things going on than there is in the color. You know, if the editors have this choice versus okay, that this choice versus this choice, I think they would all choose to print the gray version. Just the nature of editors. So if I want them to print it in line art. I need to give them only line art. See you later, Theo. Thank you for uh, sitting in with me. Um, they'll like the gray. Let's make it a little bit lighter. I think I'll give him a gray version. Which means I need to come in and clean it up a little bit. So, in these places where it didn't work because uh, there wasn't enough contrast, give it a little bit of contrast. Oh, the Phoebe! You know, the Phoebe, I think your work is just absolutely great. And uh, I was very impressed with it. And I, I do appreciate your hosting my feed the other day. We hosted you back, although uh, I don't have that many people that my hosting back is, has much value. But I think, uh, I think you're great and uh, very impressed with your, uh, particularly your uh, line art style. Of the way the... Pen responds to you.
Okay, so I think this... Uh, so I'm a fan of the Phoebe. Everybody go look at the Phoebe. Ah, well, thank you, Phoebe. You know, I'm the only editorial cartoonist, I think, that's doing this. And uh, I feel like... Unless I succeed at it, the other cartoonists aren't going to do it. He needs some more detail in his wings. <laughs> yeah, I am very impressed with your work. <sighs> okay. Let's darken this up. That's what he needed. He needed something nasty going on with his wings. He didn't have quite enough nasty going on. That looks kind of nasty, doesn't it? I only have one pattern that I use, which is this, br this sponge pattern that I made for myself from an actual sponge. All right, that made his, his wings look better. And one thing that frightens me when I do this kind of switch to grayscale is that um, I'm afraid I'm forgetting something that I had in there in a light color, like a yellow or something that I can't just see now on my monitor because uh, it's gone invisible for me. But then when I see the cartoon print in the newspaper, I uh, am surprised by some crap that shows up. So uh, one of the ways to deal with surprise crap that's going to show up is to throw in more crap so that if the surprise crap comes up, it looks like it's just part of your planned crap. So. I'll do that. Throw in some more crap. 16%. Okay, so this will be some general crap. Background crap that needs a little more. That makes, that just makes it look a little nastier too, you know, just because there's, the crap doesn't stop on the inside. The Phoebe writes, I have you in the top slot on recommended artists on my new stream layout. I'll keep putting the word out and I will now be silent and watch and eat. Well, thank you very much, Phoebe. That's really very nice of you. And, you know, regrettably, I'm still learning how to do this and, uh, I don't even know how to do that. I haven't put a bit of thought into it. I think I uh, have much, much Twitch culture and streaming knowledge yet to develop. Okay. I think I'm going to go with this is the grayscale version and uh, stick with it. And note that, uh, well, I still have the choice of putting the Zika. No, I don't. I, I messed it up with the, the contrast, so that doesn't work anymore. So I'm not going to label him Zika. I'm going, this is going out without a label, uh, which is the manly editorial cartoonist thing to do, you know. Manly editorial cartoonists do not use the labels. I say as I draw a suitcase full of labels. Um... A little bit more crud. Didn't like that bit of crud. Okay. 
I'm gonna go with him. Let's flatten. Okay. I think the black and white version is done. We'll save this as 1097B. Zika Mosquito Gray is 400 DPI. That should be, well, I'll have to check and see if it's small enough. I have to have everything be under the 3.5 meg limit or else it doesn't get emailed out from our system. And as a TIFF, that turned out to be 2.5 megs, so that's fine. Okay, so I'm good. Don't need to save it as a JPEG. All right. Well, folks. I've got uh, 21 people watching, and that's so nice, but um, I think I finished this. So, as you recall, this is the, and I've been online for three hours and 40 minutes, so might as well finish it, huh? So here's my mosquito. Here's my old SARS guy, which is basically the same cartoon except for SARS, and that was... 12 years ago, probably. 15 years ago. So I've got here he is in black and white line, and I've decided not to go with that. I'm going to give the editors the gray. And uh, then I've got the color as well, which is here. So. Uh, the line will not go to editors, the color will go to editors, and the gray will go to editors. And uh, we're done. Dawifa writes, bravo, thank you so much. The Feeb writes, great stuff, Daryl. That always happens to me. Most folks jump in right near the end. You're featured on the creative, I'm on the creative Jumbotron right now. Boy, here I would be quitting right when I'm on the Jumbotron, but I don't have a next thing to draw yet. And, uh end up on the jumbotron right when i'm quitting oh and i got to 200 bat moose followed me my 200th follower that's a that's a milestone thank you very much bat bat moose that was 22 minutes ago but i just looked up for the first time so uh hey thank you everybody thank you uh for your advice i decided not to label the zika mosquito zika uh just because of all you guys telling me that uh I need to be more manly than that, so I was. And um, I think we're all done. I'll do another cartoon in a, a day or two when I think of what the next thing I want to draw is. I have a bunch of little um, post-it notes around with uh, notes on things I'm going to think about doing. And uh, I know I'm not the most organized guy in the world but uh here you can see my uh my upside down wacom monitor and these are the kinds of notes that i do for myself um and at this point so i make a note that i have to speak at this newspaper conference um but this is the one that i think is my most likely new cartoon which is uh republican elephant with the crews and trump monsters under the bed giving him a nightmare um, so if I don't think of anything better in the next couple of days, you'll see me drawing the Monsters Under the Bed cartoon, which is kind of a weak one, I think. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Phoebe, and thank you, uh, 
Ginger and Juice and Dawifa and everyone. And I think I'm uh, I'm out of here for today. So uh, uh, please uh, join me next time. And thank you again, uh, everyone, so much.